This is an imaginary opening theme song. Theme song. Oh. Hey guys, you know who's an excellent authority on all things anime? That's right, it's Disney plus Japan's exec. Yes, because who else would know about anime than a Disney plus Japan exec, right? Right? They definitely know what they're talking about, right? And it's not like they uh, are making stuff up now, are they? Oh, uh, no. I don't think this is going anywhere good, but let's see what they said, shall we? Disney plus Japan exec admits anime industry making a shift toward more acceptable expressions in order to appeal to wider audiences. And finally giving confirmation to the bitter truth that many fans of the medium already knew, Disney plus Japan boss Takuto Yawata has admitted that the wider anime industry is actively attempting to change its core identity in an attempt to make the medium more appealing to global audiences, particularly those located in the Western world. Yes, because if we all know, anime is only for the Western world. It was never not for the Western world. Yes. What? That's not true. Okay, then why does he think it is? To the disbelief of many fans, the House of Mouse's entry into the anime business has admittedly surpassed expectations. Uh, launching an anime-only streaming hub named Disney Plus Star in October 2021, the entertainment conglomerate has since outpaced some of their more established rivals in acquiring an impressive and popular catalog of exclusive content, including Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War, Ranger Reject, unfortunately localized as Go Go Loser Ranger. What? Who localized this, man? Sheesh. Sandland the series and the entirety of the Macros catalog. I mean, there's no denying Bleach is a very big title to have though. Also, the Macros catalog is pretty good to have as well. Like, you know, I think that's the only reason why they would have surpassed expectations in the first place because they got their hands on very big titles. Having overseen the service's continued growth ever since its inception, Yawata was extremely informed on the current state of the overall anime industry when he was asked about during an April 2024 interview with Japanese news outlet Montan Web. As for his thoughts on the fact that the general anime medium is no longer a niche one, I mean, I don't think anime was ever niche in a way because like the only thing that made it niche was more that a lot of people on the western uh, side of the world sometimes would just you know point out people and say haha you enjoy this uh, child's cartoon blah 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 that's what it made it quote unquote niche but like anime itself has never been niche i don't like i wouldn't call anime niche though you know it was only because like a lot of people uh, they did not give it a chance but you know throughout the years and the exposure that the internet gave and, and the bigger titles and all that you know like now people actually can uh, name a few anime titles which okay granted it's you know like naruto one piece and demon slayers in there as well but you know at least they can name something you know before it was all like uh do you, do you mean a random cartoon name and stuff you know at least they can name it now so that's also a lot of proof of how much uh anime's influence has been you know outside of japan but it's not like the western world is what makes anime anime with more and more fans finding themselves drawn to its unique offerings every day the head of disney post japan opened as machine translator via deep l which you know means it probably won't be as accurate as you would like it to be so let's see what it says uh there's no doubt that we have undergone very significant changes over the past 10 years now japanese animation is entering a golden age what has changed compared to 10 years ago is that we used to think of the business as a set of videograms and TV broadcasts and we used to make works for people who could buy videograms, he explained. We were making films for people who could buy videograms. Videograms are still around today, of course, but streaming distribution has become more common and the target audience is no longer limited to the domestic market. The rise of streaming distribution is why it has spread globally. It is playing a very large role as a communication tool for users around the world. And I believe that Japanese animation is still in the process of evolving. I mean, Japanese animation has always been on, you know, like evolving and stuff. Just look at how Doraemon was and then look at how 
Bleach was animated, and then look at a more recent title that was done. There's always constant evolution, like, sure, I know people like to meme about some main characters in anime kind of, like, look like each other, like how there's a bunch of uh, Kita tools in a way, right? When Sword Art Online became even more popular than you would see, like, in different animes, the main character were kind of, like, had the same characteristics as him because they would all have like similar hairstyles to him and stuff like that sure like people did meme on that stuff like that but it's not like animation hasn't keep on evolving and stuff it has and then i think uh, someone didn't notice that it did the exact same paragraph here so we'll just skip that and then it says yawata then revealed that a few years ago the north american market was growing so we focused on storytelling that would be well received in north america in asia a different genre was being received and we as creators were conscious of the fact that we had to focus on domestic North American and Asian markets which sounds very weird in a way because your focus should be to like try to introduce someone a new medium not turn it into a medium that they already know because then they can't really differentiate between you and other stuff I would say now however the same fun and excitement can be experienced at the same time in any region he added that is how common Japanese animation has become around the world what we thought was for the Japanese market is not accepted in all regions i believe that the market has matured to that extent i feel like you know the more people were exposed to anime the more they saw the greatness of it and the, the more they wanted to watch it and then the more they wanted to support it so if it was just for one market and never branched out out of that it wouldn't have been such a worldwide known thing in the first place their curiosity peaked by his mention of anime's acceptance on the global stage man tan a uh, web then asked Hiyawata, Japanese animation has a history of unique evolution that is not found anywhere else. There is even a kind of radicalized expression when it comes to distribution to the world, is it necessary to change the style? Uh, in turn, the Disney exec opined, uh, I don't think there has been any major shift. The fundamentals of storytelling, the precision of the action, etc. have not changed, but there may be a shift toward adopting more acceptable expressions. And see, this is the point where not a lot of people understand what he's trying to say here when you say acceptable expressions like are you saying you're just gonna get rid of any kind of expression you don't like because like a lot of the times what makes an anime good is an expression that you never would have thought you'd see suddenly pop up in your screen and you're like what what was that you know so it could just be because of the translation uh, but it could just be that it's, he just said something that isn't really understandable in a way or maybe he just said something that's open to interpretation in a lot of ways so who knows in order to be seen by many people expressions that do not hurt or mislead people should be taken for granted he continued that is not a negative thing but perhaps an evolution when videograms were the focus there was a tendency for only those who wanted to buy them to do so but our awareness is changing because we are now distributing to a larger market through a service that can be viewed at any time by adults and children alike depending on the series because there's a lot of series that <laughs> children should not be watching that's a whole other problem you know parents need to be aware of that however despite the industry's growing focus on western audiences Yawata attempted to assure the outlet that when it came to which works to distribute on Disney Plus Star his main concern was that the given anime provided an and viewers with a worthwhile story. I want to reiterate that our primary focus is on the best storytelling, he said. We don't have a specific genre or style of work in mind, and since our service is viewed by a diverse audience, we don't focus on any particular genre. So you care about storytelling, but then you say we'll make sure our expressions are the way we want them to be? Then why do you care about expressions? You don't just let them express themselves <laughs> any way they want to. To this end, Yamata took a moment to address the widespread the concern many fans have held regarding Disney's motivation in acquiring the exclusive global rights to big name franchises such as aforementioned Bleach and Macros. We understand that Disney Plus uh, exclusive distribution of Japanese animation has been met with a certain amount of surprise, he noted. We are a distribution platform, but we are also a member of the productions we distribute, so we want to contribute to the excitement of the productions, not just stick to our own distribution, such as tie-ins with movie versions like Sandland, the series, I've never heard of that, but you know, I mean I even read it above as well but i still haven't heard of it so who knows the best example of this is the expansion is our collaboration with kodansha for which we are focusing on ways to boost the excitement beyond our position as a distribution platform he stated we are working hard to make our partners and fans feel the benefits of exclusive distribution as disney plus we are trying to help bring the best of japanese creativity and storytelling to the world and part of that japanese creativity is the fact that 
they use expressions to tell a deeper kind of feeling to other people that, you know, sometimes just looking at the face you understand something's gonna happen or like you feel a different kind of emotion you know and yet you say you might nerf this which does not make sense uh, as the conversation drew to a close yawata shared his optimism towards the future of anime telling his host storytelling has evolved and there's now a market that accepts anything that deviates from the high road so if they're accepting it why are you trying to change it we also believe that no matter what the setting the point at which people are moved remains the same even if it is universal said the what is the best storytelling? We believe that it is universal and can deliver an emotional experience equally well for any time period, any country, any region, and any generation. The combinations are endless and while new ones are continually being created, some things will never change until we change them. You forgot to add that. <laughs> so here's the thing. Disney was known for quite some time for their good titles, you know, like a lot of the older works like right like the original lion king was great uh, little mermaid then later on the more recent stuff with either their tv shows or their uh, cartoons or other series and stuff like that right and at a certain point disney started to like treat kids even more childish than what they used to treat them as and also they don't really want to make an effort to make new series most of the time so that's why they did like the live action remakes of their older titles like disney themselves don't know what they're doing anyways and like a lot of people are seeing the fall of disney you know and now this disney plus exec is saying they will definitely do stuff to animate to make it even more accessible and stuff like that but the thing is the more you try to cater to certain people the more harder it's going to be because people can change their opinions can change their minds and like lickety split one second they'll be all like oh i really like the way you did this Thing. and then the next second they'll be all like how dare you how dare you do this you know that's the beauty of anime that's why you know a lot of people like anime because you don't know what's gonna happen in it they have their own way of expressing stuff they have their own way of showing stuff and the faces that the characters themselves do in anime sometimes have like a very big impact on people just from you know looking at them right they don't even have to say anything for you to understand like something's gonna happen or it might just make you cry or or whatever it is that's happening on the screen right and now you're saying you might box that up according to a certain audiences because you want to be able to cater to the wider audience but which wider audience are you even trying to cater to no one knows you know everyone's all like who is this audience they're trying to cater to because like it, it, can this audience even name any kind of titles <laughs> an anime like who are you actually catering to dude what are you trying to do no one knows all you've done is just cause even more confusion and and no one wants to be hit by a confusion ray by you okay like sheesh man sheesh i mean i don't think anything major will happen because of this but also kind of weird that someone said this as well don't try to take away what makes anime unique in the first place or don't try to water it down for an audience that you don't even know if they are actually consuming the content in the first place anime has already done a lot be known worldwide you don't need to like box it up and cater it as well okay that's a horrible idea forget about that idea okay but yeah guys i'll see you in another video bye bye like and subscribe